What's up YouTube? It's Todrick. Shout out to Michelle Bassage, the biggest drag queen I know for this really cool shirt that she gave me last week. I love you, Michelle. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about my first gay experience because it was quite, quite interesting. I have a, I had a lot of gay experiences when I was a kid. I went to church. <laughs> This is so weird. It kind of seems like a little bit creepy, like uh, like I'm like a little bit Jeffrey Dahmer-ish, but whatever. Yogo, you're only gay once. Is that a thing? We should make it a thing. When I was younger, I, I always knew that there was something different about me. I remember that all the kids that were in Plainview got to go to the YMCA, all the black kids. It was like a, mostly like all the, the people across the tracks. There was an area called Blacktown, and like if you lived over there or went to any of the black churches and you passed or made good grade, then they took us on a bus to Amarillo, Texas, and we got to go to the YMCA. And I passed, of course. She was a genius and got to go on this trip and I remember all of these guys I don't want, I'm not gonna say any names in this video because I don't want any of those people to slide into my DMs and be like you're trying to out me because a lot of the people that will be mentioned in this video are straight with children and are still like married and living in the town that I grew up in. I went to the YMCA and we were all like playing sports and stuff and I was never the kid playing sports so I go into the locker room and I'm like maybe in seventh or eighth grade and all of these guys these huge just sexy black men are like running around in the shower they're like fighting each other and this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this and I literally my hormones went crazy I was sitting down watching them I remember it like it was yesterday I'm getting hot right now just thinking about the shit again is this too much for YouTube? Oh, sorry, I have a laugh in the corner. Shout out to Andy over here, who's helping me. Who was also played the guy who stole my boyfriend in Straight Outta Oz, just so you know. Roll the tape. Mm -hmm. That's him. So, I remember getting very aroused. How do you say? I was very inf inflated. <laughs> the word to use because there are kids watching this video and I already probably lost a lot of followers from the thoughty Instagram post picture I posted for 4th of July. But am I taking it down? Maybe. Did you see that picture? I don't know what came over me on 4th of July, guys. I just posted a picture of me just like butt naked on a float. Chester took the picture for me and I was like, this is kind of beat. I should probably open up the thirst trap for one second. And I've never almost gotten pregnant from Instagram ever before this photo. So I will not be doing that again. Anyway, I was definitely inflated so much to the point where I could not move. Like I couldn't stand up. I was so embarrassed. I was like, if someone comes over here and asks me to stand up, I'm going to 150 million percent out myself. And uh, luckily they didn't and I just sat there and like watched them and it, I was just like just sitting over there loitering in the corner. By the way, there's no air conditioning in my Airbnb right now so you're gonna hear that little thing that sounds like Whoopi Goldberg is warming up the kids in Sister Act 2. It's the broken air conditioner. Anyway, so that happened. So then I got a fog machine for Christmas. I remember like it was yesterday and this was back in the day before you could get a fog machine just because you felt like getting one. I got the, this fog machine and I put it in my room and I'd had it for a couple of years and and one day this kid came over that I went to church with and he was so fine, waves on swim. At that time the song Soldier was coming out by Destiny's Child and he was literally just everything to me. I would play the fog machine and be like, oh, I can't even see you. I would push the button on the fog machine and there would be so much smoke in the room that I'd be like, I can't even see you. Oh my gosh, if you got naked, I wouldn't even be able to tell. <laughs> and so he got naked and then we like ended up hooking up and then uh, and by hooking up, like, we sword fought for a moment. That same thing kind of happened, minus the fog machine. I just, like, we were playing, like, house, and there was, like, me and this other guy, and we would, like, go make out with each other and go in the closet and whatever. It was so crazy. But I consider my first gay experience to be... I moved to Arlington, Texas in, like, 2001 and started to go to Bowie High School, and that is what really changed my life. I went to the first pep rally, and this guy comes out, and I thought he was the sexiest person I had ever seen in my entire life. And he wouldn't have normally even been my type. Up until that point, I only dated black men. I was like all about like, you know, Usher and Trey Songs, like people that look like that. But not out Trey Songs, I said, but people who looked like Trey Songs no. before he was out. And, and just to be clear, Trey Songs was still existing at that point. For all we know, I could have ran across him at the Park Small. And Elle Woods wins 
the case. But anyway, he was a cheerleader and he was the only male cheerleader at our school and every time he would jump and stuff, he would like just, the crowd would go wild. He was the best tumbler. He had these little booty shorts Daisy Dukes on and his booty was like popping.com and he had a tongue ring and I just thought <laughs> that if you had a tongue ring, you were just like husband material. And I remember like living, we, we lived in Corsicana but we drove to Arlington every single day so that we, I could go to this school with this specific choir teacher and show choir. And I came up with this wonderful plan that I was going to convince him to let me go, go and stay at his house. I convinced him that my parents were leaving and that I needed somewhere to stay otherwise I wouldn't be able to go to show choir camp. I didn't have anywhere to stay. It was really psychotic and I'm so embarrassed that I'm even admitting that to you guys now. Anyway, so I finally built up enough courage to call Josh Lindsay and say, yo, um, I need to stay at your house. And Josh was like, actually, I'm not going to be in town. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, actually, I have a couple other friends that offer me to stay with there, so I'm totally cool. I actually didn't really need to stay there anyway. We eventually, I got his number, and we started talking, and every night I would talk to him, and we used to listen to the song Drops of Jupiter all the time. That was my jam. Anytime I hear that song, I think about that moment in my childhood because I was in love with Joshua Lindsay. There was nobody that was hotter, better. I would just literally write I Heart Josh Lindsay in all of my books everywhere and then crumble them up so my mom didn't see them. And my mom would pick up the phone in the middle of the night and be like, Todrick, who are you talking to? And I was like, oh, my friend, we're just talking about um, like video games or something, I don't know. It was really embarrassing, but we didn't even have dial-up internet. We had to use like the free little disc that you would get at Walmart, and I would just keep reusing them over and over and over again. Eventually, we ended up kind of talking, and I remember one day him telling me that he thought I was cute, and I was like, ah! But then I was like, that's what's up. <laughs> Whatever. And then one day he asked me, like, what would you say if I asked you to be my boyfriend? And it freaked me out so much because I was like, I can't be your boyfriend. Like, I'm not that gay. Like, I'm definitely gay that I think about you all the time and write your name all over everything and imagine you taking off your cheerleading shorts in front of me all the time, but be your boyfriend? That's preposterous. Not gonna happen. And so it was very weird because there was a moment that a lot of gay guys go through where being gay is just your first, like being gay is just like a fantasy that's like something that has to do with sex and sexuality. But the love part of it comes later, I think, because of society, which is why I'm so happy that YouTube exists today and that kids are coming out at a much younger age because when I was growing up, my only representation of what a gay man was were the guys that had their shirts tied up around their like, you know what I'm talking about, the guys that had their shirts tied up like, up here, like the Daisy Dukes, like the, the Wayans brothers pretending to be gay, like caricatures of what gay people were, or people that you would see on Mari, Mari Povic or the Ricky Lake show, and my family would always be like, these people are disgusting. That's what I thought gay people were, but now because the world is so much more like progressive, and even though we have a long way to go, I just love that people, now that the world has progressed so much, that there are kids that are growing up, and being gay is a total non-factor to them. I love it so much. I wish that I had had that when I was growing up, literally the building is getting torn down, if you can hear that in the background, but she don't care, she's got a story to tell. Yeah, so I ended up kind of dating Josh Lindsay, and we kissed for the first time, he was my first real kiss, and we made out while watching Moulin Rouge in high school, and it was so awesome, and anytime to this very day that I hear the song, Nobody Wants to Be Lonely with Ricky, uh, with Rick, with Ricky. Ricky, oh my god, what is his name? Ricky Martin! <laughs> I tried it! Every time I hear Nobody Wants to Be Lonely with Ricky Martin and Christina Aguilera or Drops of Jupiter, I immediately, in one instant, think about Josh Lindsay. So Josh, if you're watching this, sorry that I put you on blast, but thank you so much for inspiring this video. He was my first real gay experience, the first person that I really felt like I was like in love with, and it really, that experience changed my life. Comment below and let me know what you guys want me to talk about next. I'm in LA taking a break from being on tour and I'm just gonna be having like story time videos also leave a comment below to tell me suggestions of who you think I should be collaborating with in the very near future and lastly if you've ever wanted a birthday video shout out or an anniversary shout out or a personalized video from me to you or to give to one of your friends as a gift for a pick me up whatever the case may be I am now on cameo the link is in the description box below you can order a video from me to you within 24 hours you'll have a personalized video that you can use to surprise your friends, your children, your grandchildren, your dogs, anybody you want to surprise. Um, I think it's such a cool app and it's such a neat way for me to be able to interact with you guys. I'm on there at least for the next month or two.
And I can't wait to make a video for you. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Goodbye.